Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, debate amongst friends proudly presents to you the NBA Finals. Between the Milwaukee Bucks, you got the Phoenix Suns. They are your conference finals champion. Doc Leesner here. I know it was. The podcasting beast here with the Professor John Gotti, the king of RNG, the troll master, the data analyzing ninja, the conqueror of his only feet, the cleaner. Best podcasting machine, El Tranquilo. Doc, how are you doing today? Man, I am as good as feathers in a pillow. That's homage to your t shirt. <laughs> it is very nice, the good feathers. Uh, but we have NBA conference champs. Obviously, we knew that the Eastern Conference was still in progress. We thought it was going to be extended, but no, 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 not in here. The Milwaukee Bucks closed out the Hawks. Um, Very unfortunate. Um, The only fortunate news that came out of this is that Nate McMillan gets the nod for the job instead of being an interim coach. So I am happy about that. But in the end, the man who I said needed to step up, Mm -hmm. right, Chris Middleton, I've challenged him over and over. And it, it, it wasn't a great shooting night, but it was a shooting night that was good enough to get the job done. Chris Middleton carried the Bucks with Drew Holiday and a few others uh, in Giannis's absence to carry the Bucks to the NBA Finals. Uh, helped them take take it over the top with a 23-point third quarter going right. four for seven for three. Mm-hmm. Really, really incredible. Um, of course, the Brick Lopez Shaq <laughs> comparisons ended with game six, right. uh, 13 points, six rebounds. Uh, he yeah. did get three blocks, which was, wasn't bad. Of course. Um, but, I mean, even Drew Holiday got two blocks, which is not bad, of course, for a guard. But um, I think Bobby Portis's presence, um, obviously he didn't have the hot game that he had previously, but even his 12 points, nine rebounds was um, awesome. Um, I'm... <sighs> I'm appreciative of the confidence that Milwaukee had to continue to let PJ Tucker shoot this corner three. I said it during the game. I was like, man, if they don't stop letting him shoot that three, even though it was only seven of them, each one clanking off the side of the rim, um, only one of seven. Um, Obviously on the defensive end, he's still a beast and, um, I hope that he can obtain a championship either this year or in the near future, but they won't be able to play this style against the Suns. No. Now, of course, the big news heading into the finals is when will Giannis play, not if Giannis will play. Right. Um It's going to be interesting to say the least. Um, Obviously I know he wants to be out there um, and I'm sure it's hurting him, but I know that this is an opportunity for him to see if he sits back and really, really looks at his team. I know it's hard for him not to be out there, but if he looks at his team, the way it's, I guess, structured right now, this is a great opportunity for them to see who their true hearts are that they need to maintain. Right. Who do they need to pay? Right. Yes. Um, you, you got Pat Connaughton. You got Jeff Teague giving valuable minutes and valuable buckets down the stretch. Right. You got P.J. Tucker, who, although is great defensively, hey, maybe in the future we don't pay this guy eight to ten million dollars. Maybe we let him go and find somebody else who can play defense in that spot. But this team 
has shown that although it takes them seven games or six or seven games, they're not sweeping folks, but at least they know they have a core of five guys outside of Giannis that they can actually put a team around and build the role players around them. Um, which is the only thing I can give the Bucks credit for is that they were able to compete without Giannis, which we can't say the same thing for a team like the Clippers or the Nets, right? I don't uh, know. Without I those, we kept talking about playoff P. Well, we're not gonna go there. Uh, we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. Um, we, we're not. We have the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks game Tonight. one. Tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. The game should be awesome. Um, I'm expecting Phoenix to take this game tonight because Milwaukee just really hasn't played good any game one. Um, and Phoenix has had an opportunity to really gain some rest. Mm-hmm. So I'm expecting Phoenix to come out and win, but I don't expect Milwaukee to come out and just not play. Like I expect them to play, but I would like to see Drew Holiday and how he plays against Chris Paul, which I think might be the matchup to watch. Um, You know, uh, Drew Holiday has always been good, um, but let's see how he plays against a savvy veteran like CP3. It's the atmosphere is going to be rocking tonight. It is. It's going to I be can agree with rocking. that. Now, I will say this: I'm going to go with the Suns winning Game One because the same reason. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bucks have not been the most dynamic offense coming out of the gate in the series. It is just if you've seen their games, you you know that they tend not to do well in Game One. Most of the time, Game Twos. Um, conference finals, they was able to come, uh, you know, bounce back a little bit though. Um, but I see the Suns winning this one. I don't know if it's going to be a blowout, right? But I think it will be a very, very competitive game. Um, but I'm happy to see this. Um, these two teams, you know, smaller market teams getting into it. We, Doc and Prof, we love a good underdog story. Teams that hasn't made it to that promised land ever or in a very long time. So I like right. the story that's being told here. Many casuals don't like it. Of and course. NBA media doesn't like it. But the true diehard basketball fans, we love this. Yeah, and I always am a big component of a new champion. And by new champion, I don't mean just like a new uh a team that was successful before, right? Like, I don't, I don't mean like, hey, the Warriors didn't win last year, but they win this year. Or the Lakers won last year, you know, and they got to the finals again, but, you know, the, they lost to, uh, I don't even know from the East who can, I can even put in here, but they lost to a team in the East. Um, in this situation, there's two teams that, number one, are hungry. They're reestablishing the NBA. This could be huge because although Phoenix – is I would say a mid-tier market, not a small, not a large, mid-tier, right? This kind of give hope to the small to mid-town, the mid-level teams to actually get free agents and actually build teams. So you might look to see a team like New Orleans, um, obviously uh, Memphis and some of these other small to mid-market teams actually make a run at some of these free agents. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just depends on even Atlanta, right? That's a, I think Atlanta is a, a bigger market than obviously Arizona, Phoenix, and you know Milwaukee, obviously. Uh, but maybe this will give them an opportunity. Hey, they're one piece away. They can sign that piece, re-sign Collins and whoever else they need to re-sign, and they can kind of move on from there. Yes. Um, but I'm excited about that uh, aspect of it. But who do you got tonight? You, I know you said uh, you have Phoenix tonight. Yes, I have Phoenix uh, winning by uh, seven. 
winning by oh he even put a number on it ladies and gentlemen make sure you put your bets in john guy said it's a seven point spread actually um, uh they have it as a six point spread so i'm talking about you you have know, it as a seven but, point but spread. they also have it as a six point <laughs> spread too gotcha so that's what the bet is they have phoenix by six yeah gotcha well that pretty much sums up well, this you particular. Didn't say who you got tonight? Well, I said I had Phoenix. I don't. I said that earlier. I did started with that. I, gotcha. I started with Phoenix. I said that Milwaukee doesn't really start the series off well, and I expect it to be the same tonight. That's when I said I I, I would like to see how Drew Holiday plays against CP3. Um, I think that's the key matchup. Obviously, I know Devin Booker and Chris Middleton are going to go ham against each other. It should be a great matchup of two young guards slash forwards. Um, Jay Crowder and PJ Tucker, I assume, will be the the guys that cancel each other out. Uh, But I think PJ, he needs to score score similar to how Marcus Morris needed to score in the previous matchup. Um, So that's where it's going to come down to those extra players. Um, Obviously, if Giannis comes back, it's going to be a more entertaining experience for all of us, but I don't think we're going to get cheated here. And if I see one more asterisk, I see it is you have to play with the people in front of you. Of course. But if I see one more asterisk in regards to, you know, the Suns winning because of injuries, I am probably going to lose it because I know I was a hamstring away from celebrating a Rockets victory. Right. But we know we don't give no asterisks for that because the the freaking Warriors won the championship, I believe, that year. No, they lost it. And I believe that the Rockets could have won. That that was the year that Toronto won it. That's right. And I believe the Rockets could have won. That particular series, but that's water under the bridge. But I know that you heard this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And if you didn't, you can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com where you'll be able to find this episode as well as the previous ones. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we continue our show and go over game one of this series. And uh, from there, you know to come back here every day at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for more news, more analysis, and the read.